thank you all for being here. It's pretty overwhelming. And in case you thought I was left out of the wrestling world, I was the practice company. <laughs> It's neat to me that my dad passed in 2020 because he was absolutely a man with vision. Metaphorically speaking, his vision manifested itself in his philosophical, philosophical thoughts. He was the guy who maintained clarity while others would get lost in the fog. The fog of mass opinion or the fog people create for themselves. From my vantage point, he was the guy who got lost. He was the guy with the compass. He was the guy who pointed the way. Literally speaking, he was the man who didn't waver from the vision of how he wanted his life to look, how he wanted it to turn out, how and how to aim his ship to dock in the port of his choosing. He was the mason who built our home, and he was the carpenter who built the furniture and the floors and the walls within it. He had visions for what he wanted things to look like, along with mom, of course, and he had sights to organize and plan how to clearly make it happen. I realize it may not be that simplistic or clear cut. But I absolutely, absolutely think 2020 suits him. My dad put great effort into his work, teaching, his business, coaching, refereeing, and providing for us. My mom gets credit for making sure we knew that when he worked two or three jobs in one day, and therefore unseen by us, it was out of love and dedication. I heard that as obligation, which can have an unpleasant connotation. But my dad, with his super strong back or physical 16-hour work days at times, made it clear to me that his work was not a burden. He told me that a different job was a break from the prior job. Translated, coaching for two and a half hours after school was a break from teaching during the day for seven. I get that. Refereeing for three hours after that nine and a half hours with kids was also a break. I kind of get that. Construction on the weekends or after school in the fall and spring was not a break from us. You know we get that. <laughs> I respected my dad for his independence and humility. He didn't need special kudos or recognition for his accomplishments that I could tell. He competed, he won or he lost, but he did it because he enjoyed it. He wasn't chasing the medal or stressed by the number of wins or losses attained. He knew he himself, he knew that life was bigger than the medals he won. He knew that it was bigger than the wins and the losses he accrued. It was a competition that he relished. Proof lies in this. I asked him, were you nervous to compete in front of so many people in the big arenas? What? No. I would think to myself, this is ama an amazing day. I get to beat 1,000 people at once. <laughs> the joy of the activity, that was his motivation. And that I learned from well and not be taken. When my dad chose to share a thought, not a defense, mind you, but an idea, his opinion, it was honest. He didn't change his words to keep or to make friends. He didn't soften them to make them more palatable to his audience. It wasn't always easy to take, yet I respect that he did it politicized. He knew what you were getting. A decent example of this was when his boss, the principal, asked him to do some new task for the kids, and his answer was a solid, hard, unapologetic, no, that's a pretty dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, of course, wondered, well, won't he be mad at you? His answer, he was surprised at my question, was, well, I'm not there to be his friend. I have those. <laughs> I don't mind telling you that as a third year teacher, I had a principal call me out for skipping teacher meetings. Well, I took my dad's advice and told him the truth. I'm a special education teacher, and those meetings aren't useful to me. I can still hear my boss's side. I related this episode to my dad, and he chuckled. Sue, so I had tenure before I said this thing. <laughs> Seeing me in my wedding dress. 
We didn't speak. We didn't need to. He apologized over the years a few times for missing my heart in life's events. 78. I think he was 78. The last time he told me he was sorry. He was bold, humble, direct, very affirming, and he leaned in to the hard conversations. My dad was tender enough. and wise enough and kind enough to prepare me long ago for this moment in life. I was in 10th or 11th grade, and for some reason he firmly told me that when you are crying at my funeral, you are crying for yourself. Not for me. Don't cry for me. I'm in a good place. My dad's determination was motivating. It was inspiring. His conquering attitude. It alone made me want to be better. It made me want to be like him. His attitude coupled with his, coupled with his keen ability to push us and his students, pat him on the back and kick him in the butt, was his teaching mantra. He didn't say it like that. He got the idea he believed in you without using any specific words. He got a profound sense that you had miles of untapped potential and that he was looking forward to seeing it manifested. Some examples of his toughness are great, but really made one shake their head. He quit a 30 year smoking habit to tell my mom the moment he said he would. It was a pipe, one, that's out, one of the ones that was out there. Furthermore, Ted, our oldest brother, suggested that he throw out his pipe to make it easier. No, my dad said, that wouldn't be challenge enough. The doctors did not believe in the Atkins diet or the results the author claimed it would produce. They didn't believe he could eat red meat and no carbohydrates and drop cholesterol points. Well, I can't live all salad and cottage cheese anymore, he grumbled. And then he read the book and he went on the diet and within three months lost 15 cholesterol points. And of course, lost some respect for the doctors. <laughs> <laughs> he caught his arm in a bell sander at work to keep the student from getting hurt. He went to the hospital. He got his 20 or so stitches. And then he went back to school to teach his last two classes of the day. His tenacity and unfettered toughness was inspiring. Though the tough side of this nasty meant that we never missed school or church. That's tough. My dad was also pretty cool. I had the best of both worlds. He called me beautiful, but then he also put a hammer in my hands. And whatever ability and strength I had with that hammer was enough. I got to be a princess on the inside, pulling a hammer on the outside. It still makes me laugh. It took him two swings total to sink a four-inch framing nail. It took me ten. <laughs> Let me close with two G-rated edisms, because it would not be right if I didn't. Ed edisms are nimble-minded, often humorous, and intelligent retorts to life situations or life, life questions. One sentence, one thought, one answer, problem solved. Consider some matchup of Dave Chappelle, Tim Allen, and The Rock. Example, no one is made based on a foxhole. An edism in a crisis moment. I was six years old in the grocery store with my dad. We were watching a child in the next aisle have a large temper tantrum over a candy bar. The mother gave in and bought the boy the candy. I literally thought, is that how you do it? <laughs> <laughs>